For decades, we've been told that a low-fat diet is the ideal for human health. Since the 1980s, governments around the world have condemned fat as the villain in the quest for health saga. But as the low-fat trends spread across the globe and the race to reduce fat in food manufacturing accelerated, so too did the increase of added sugars and refined carbohydrates to the Western diet. And with it came soaring rates of obesity, heart disease, and type 2 diabetes. In this episode, I'm going to expose the truth and answer the question, did we get it wrong with our war on fat? Fat is an essential micronutrient which we cannot survive without. We use dietary fats, otherwise known as fatty acids, for energy, of course, but they also provide important structural components for the trillions of cells in our body, all of which, by the way, are contained within a cell membrane that is made up of fat. Fatty acids form the backbone of our hormones. They keep our skin healthy. They fuel our heart muscle. And what's more, our brain is nearly 60% fat. In fact, you could say that we're all a bunch of fat hits. Who are you talking to right now? The fact that it was flawed research that first implicated fat as the bad guy is perhaps a larger story for another day. But by demonizing the entire fat category, we miss the fact that not all fats are created equal. Bad fats are indeed unhealthy and we should steer clear of them. But good fats are essential to human health and we reduce them at our peril. I'm dead. But what constitutes good and bad is where the problem lies. Before I continue the story, I'd like to explain some of the basics around fat. We get a little bit sciencey here, but bear with me. Fat molecules are for the most part chains of carbon atoms that are bonded with hydrogen atoms. There are lots of different fat molecules that are distinguished by the nature of the bonds and how long the chains are, and they all serve different functions in the body. Each carbon atom can have four bonds, and when each of these are singularly bonded to hydrogen atoms, Atoms, we call that saturated. However, if any of those carbons are double bonded to other carbons, we call that unsaturated. If only one carbon atom is double bonded with another in a given chain, that is referred to as a monounsaturated fatty acid. When more than one carbon in a chain is double bonded, we call that polyunsaturated. Hopefully that makes sense so far. Now in high school chemistry, we learn that atoms generally like to be bonded because when they are, they're more stable. So applying this to fats, it's easy to grasp the principle that the more saturated a fatty acid, the more more stable a molecule it is. And when it comes to human health, stable molecules are generally a good thing. So to summarize, fatty acids come in three broad categories, monounsaturated, polyunsaturated, and saturated fatty acids. We need all three categories in human health. We get some fatty acids from our diet, and we can make others ourselves as part of the wonderfully complex chemistry that is human biology. Most foods contain a mix between those three categories. For example, olives contain mostly monounsaturated fatty with smaller amounts of polyunsaturated and saturated fats, while walnuts, on the other hand, are predominantly polyunsaturated with smaller amounts of the other two. Chicken contains a relatively even distribution between the three, while beef and dairy foods lean more towards the saturates. Now, in each of these fatty acid groups, there are different types of fatty acid molecules, all with slightly different chemical structures. For example, lauric acid, palmitic acid, and caprylic acid are all saturated fatty acids. Each of them are used by the body in different ways, and some are more beneficial to human health than others. So let's get back to the story of good fat versus bad. Ask anyone in the street today whether they should eat less fat, and chances are most will agree. And in the same breath, they'll probably won't hesitate to call saturated fat the worst of the lot. That's been the message given to the public for almost five decades. And since saturated fat, for the most part, comes from animals, the world bought the story hook, line, and sinker that animal fats are bad and vegetable fats are good. However, when you examine the research more closely around saturated fat, fat, cholesterol, heart disease, and mortality, it starts to become clear that animal versus vegetable is too simplistic and we may have demonized the wrong thing. After all, if all saturated fats were bad, then why is the fat in human breast milk made up of mostly saturated fatty acids? The thing that determines whether fat is good or bad for us is not whether it comes from animals or vegetables, but whether the fat is toxic or not. So how does fat become toxic, you ask? Well, let's look at animal fat first. All animals have the ability to detoxify. It's a constant, ongoing process. We're exposed to toxins from our surrounding environment and from within our body. Our liver and our kidneys play a big role in eliminating toxins but when they can't quite keep up, mammals, humans included, have a clever little trick up their sleeve of stashing toxins in their fat cells to keep them away from vital organs and tissues. Now, we've all heard the expression, 
You are what you eat. Well, guess what? So too are animals. And with that in mind, let's consider what the fat from two different cows might contain. Cow number one is intensively reared, as most livestock is in the USA today, and fed a diet of genetically modified soybeans and grains grown with pesticides that are laced with antibiotics and growth hormones. Cow number two is pasture reared and roams freely, grazing on grasses and clover, its natural diet without the need for pesticides or preventative medicines and growth promoting substances. Which fat would you rather eat? The fat produced by cow number one should almost certainly be minimized, and in this context, opting for more lean cuts would be the healthier thing to do, while the fat from cow number two can be eaten in larger amounts without negative health implications. Now let's explore what can make vegetable-derived fats toxic. Vegetable-based fats contain mostly unsaturated fatty acids, which are less stable and more susceptible to damage from oxygen, light, and heat than saturated fatty acids. That's because of those unsaturated bonds I mentioned earlier. The more unsaturated a fat is, the more sensitive it is to potential damage, and the more easily it can turn rancid. Rancid fats are toxic to the body, and so too are fats that have been damaged by processing and too much heat, like the cheap vegetable oils that you find in those clear plastic bottles with yellow lids, usually on the bottom shelf of the supermarkets. Those are industrial seed oils that are heavily processed, then they remove the odor and add coloring so that they look nice. But make no mistake, these oils are harmful to health and we should not be cooking with them. As a general rule, when cooking, lean towards the more saturated fats like butter, ghee, lard and coconut oil, and the monounsaturated fats like olive oil and avocado oil. These fats can tolerate a higher heat without being damaged. Use cold pressed virgin nut and seed oils for drizzling, not for cooking, as these oils are much higher in polyunsaturated fatty acids that are easily damaged and become toxic when exposed to heat. Now I just want to close out with a word on trans fats or hydrogenated oils. These are basically cheap vegetable oils that have been processed to become shelf stable. Most vegetable oils oils are liquid at room temperature, but when they go through the process of hydrogenation, they become solid at room temperature. These processed oils are used by food manufacturers to extend shelf life and boost profits. Most fatty acids found in nature, humans can digest and use, but processed trans fats and hydrogenated fats are not found in nature and humans can't process them. And as such, they are very harmful to human health and should be avoided. And this point is where there is total agreement between the various health bodies. And in some countries, they've been banned. So read the labels and if you see the word hydrogenated anywhere, including partially hydrogenated, put it back on the shelf. So that's the story on good fat versus bad. It's time to put the low fat message to bed once and for all. Healthy fats are essential to our health and we should be eating more of them, not less. In fact, studies show that the more healthy fats we include in our diet, the more likely we are to lose weight, not gain. That's right. Now it has to be said that the whole planet has been brainwashed with this low fat message for decades. And so it's gonna take a long time to reverse it. But it's my opinion that the sooner we do, the sooner we start reversing the trends around obesity, heart disease, and diabetes. So let's get the word out together. Please share this video with the people you love, subscribe to the channel, and click on that bell icon so that you don't miss a future episode. See you next time.